Hey, this is Kev from Blender Bits. In this video, we're going to be going over one of my favorite topics, lighting. Ready? Let's go. Now this video, I'm going to give you a basic rundown of the different types of lights that you can add to your stuff in Blender. And lighting can really make or break the look of whatever you're building. So even if you're just selling models online or you're creating artwork. Light is almost everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start showing you these different types of lights. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a plane. And I'll create a few objects on this plane. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and create a... Um, hmm, what do I want to create? I'll create a cube. And I'll create a, let's see here, Suzanne, and I'll create a, I don't know, a cone, just to add some something for the light to play with. Okay? Now, if I go ahead, just by default, okay, we're on Cycles Render, and I go and I hit Rendered, it's going to show you there's already a light in the scene called lamp and it's giving you light and shadow. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of lamp. And I'm also going to, you see there's still some light in the scene because we have this background that's giving off light on its own. Okay, Cycles Renderer is awesome at this. So I'm going to go here to the world. I'm going to click here and I'm going to zero this out. Now you see nothing. Nothing. There's nothing here in the scene. There you can see. So now I'm going to go over to this panel here and I'm going to add in a point light. And all of a sudden we get light. So if I call out this little panel here that I showed you in one of the previous videos, I'm going to use this translate because I'm, I'm on the point light, okay? And I'm going to pull this guy up. Ah. Go up. Okay, we're in Suzanne right now, and we're going to come out the top of Suzanne, and we're getting light. And you can see the closer I am to Suzanne, the bigger the light spread. Now this point light throws out light in every direction, which is why we're also getting some light directly. You see this harsh shadow over here and this harsh shadow over here? Okay, we're getting light because this point light, it's like a light bulb, is throwing off light in all directions. And it falls off like it does in the real world. And so if we go to this light properties panel, we have a number of different things. We have size, which I usually don't play with too much with point light. We have strength. Okay, we can make this a lot hotter. Okay, and you can really see this pronounced now. We have color, where we can go ahead and change the color. I may think of this as like, you know, party lights, gels. And we have cast shadow. Turn that off, we get no shadow. Turn it on, we get shadow. Right, pretty simple. That's generally point light. It's one single point in space and it throws off light in every direction. I can go ahead and get rid of that now. So I'll right click on point, hit delete. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in a spotlight. And you can't see anything. So I'm going to bring this up. It's in Suzanne right now. And you see that it's going to be over Suzanne. And it's only illuminating the area that it's shining, okay? This is your flashlight. You see if I cover this little area here, and I'll make this a lot hotter so you can see the effect. Uh, I'll go even I'll go even more. Five thousand. Okay. So you see that it's just throwing off light onto Suzanne and this cone and a little bit of this cube. With this we have some more control than we do with point. So I'm going to show you what we have here. Okay, we have this cone, and a cool thing here is in this view under solid, you can choose to say show cone under the properties for the spotlight, show cone, and it shows you where that cone is. Okay, it kind of fakes the look of light wherever that cone is. So this angle is 45 degrees. You can change the angle like you do with a mag light. 
And you can also change the blend, which is how harsh this, this ring is. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and, and this will soften or harshen that edge. Now you can't see it in here, but when you hit render, you can see this, this blend. You can make it nice and nice soft fall off here. And you can really control this. So if I start rotating this light, Okay, you can see that it's it's acting like a flashlight. Okay, if I go down pretty close to Suzanne and I rotate, okay, like a flashlight. Just think of a flashlight in the dark area, okay? So if I did this and I increase the size a bit and pull it over more, you'll now see that this is going to be throwing off light in this direction and the harsh shadows going this way. So watch. See that? And you can have lots and lots and lots and lots of lights in the scene doing different things. And so you could also turn off shadow casting if you want, or turn it back on. So there's quite a bit you can do with a spotlight. Now there's another type of light that's used a lot called area light. Area light is like a big kind of uh, big rectangle or square of light. I'll show you what that is in a second. Hit delete, and now I'll create create a area light and I'll pull it up and you can see that it gives you this pretty harsh shadow because the light right now is really small okay you see it, it looks just like a point light right now except it's throwing light in the direction of this little dotted line so it's throwing it downward so I can go to size okay I can change square or rectangle okay I'll leave it at square right now and I'll say size and I'll just click and drag in there and increase the size and you see it gives me the square shape. What this is doing now, when I hit render, is it's giving me a really nice, nice kind of even light with nice soft shadows. Okay, this is very useful for lots of things. And it gives you a nice quality of light. It takes a little bit longer to render, but the quality of light is really, really nice. And with this, you can see the closer you get down Okay, to Suzanne, the harder the shadow gets, but really that's controlled more by how large your light source is. So the larger a light source, okay, the larger the light source, the softer the shadow. The smaller the light source, the harder the shadow. So area lights let us control light really, really nicely in our scene. Now there are two other types of lights that I'll go into right now. So let me go ahead and I'll get rid of, where's my area? There it is. Delete that. And I'll throw in a sunlight. Now sunlight tries to just copy the sun where it's just a huge infinite wall of light coming from one direction. So if I rotate, you know, it's all about rotation. Okay, so it kind of simulates all light, and you see the shadows are not spread out, they're all even. I'll show you what I mean here. The shadows are all even, they're all going, it's not like one point of light that throws off shadows in different directions. The shadow, it's like an infinite wall of light, like the sun. Okay, the sun hits the earth, and all shadows go the same direction, because it's such a huge source of light. Now to us, it looks like a little point in the, in the sky, but it's this giant, giant source of light coming at us. So this, this simulates sunlight. I don't use this all that often in Blender because I, I like to use things called HDRI maps. But this is it is kind of useful. So if I were to take this sunlight and give it just a kind of you know, little bit of a yellowish tint and then go over to this world where I, where I darkened it before. And let's give it some light. And let's give it a little bit of blue. You can see it starts looking a little bit like, you know, like sunlight. All right, and I'll give it a... All right, maps. All right, so here we go. So you can see that it kind of, you know, you want to fill in, fill in the areas with blue light, like the sky, and then give it kind of a, you know, early morning or mid-afternoon type lighting. Okay, so that's sunlight, and then we have another one. Okay, lastly here, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to darken this again, and I'm going to get rid of the sun, 
And I'm going to do Hemi. Hemi is just a hemispherical light. And I'll show you the solid, okay? Hemispherical light. It kind of just gives you kind of this cool umbrella of light. So if we go here to rendered, all right, it still gives you this kind of harsh shadowing. So to me, it's not too useful, but there are, you know, just like everything, it's a tool in your toolbox. And at some point you're going to take it out and go, Ooh, cool. I'm going to use Hemi for this. And you'll probably figure out that it works for you. Okay, for, but other than that, it's really not, I don't find it to be too useful. Okay. So I really stick with with uh, area lights and spotlights. There is one other way to do lighting in Blender that's really, really, really cool. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Hemi. And I'm going to create a... Ooh, you know what? I'm going to take Suzanne. And I am going to give her a material. And if you don't understand materials, there's a whole video I have in the section on materials. So I'm going to go over here to this materials tab and I'm going to hit new and I'm going to change diffuse to emission. And all of a sudden I just turned Suzanne into a light. How crazy is that? And I can use the strength and now she is this big area light. And if I move Suzanne, move her up okay she is her own light source now so this is really cool you can make neon signs and all sorts of stuff with this so you change the color change the strength and you'll start seeing that she's you know you once the strength is kind of past a certain point she just goes completely white but the color she throws off is the color you choose this is, I use this a lot in cycles. Okay, this type of lighting. It's very, very useful. So those are the main types of lights. And I hope you learned something in this video. If you got something out of it, hit like and subscribe. And I'll keep making more. At some point I'm going to start making more advanced videos. But for now I want to stick to the basics. Because there's a lot of people out there that are looking at Blender and scratching their head. And I, I kind of want to make it a bit easier for you guys to learn. Alright? Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.